Welcome to the Spark Girls podcast, the self-publishing podcast for authors. You're in the right place for the best writing, marketing and publishing advice, plus interviews with industry experts and best-selling authors. I'm Cheryl Phipps. I'm Shah Barrett. I'm Wendy Vella. And I'm Trudy J. Hello. And Hello. this week we have Canadian science fiction and fantasy author, Tao Wong with us. Say hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Welcome hey to there. the spa. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk about Patreon and serials and Kickstarter, actually. So three three kind of big topics there. Um, but first of all, I'm going to read out your bio and we'll go from there. And I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Please tell me the correct pronunciation <laughs> when we get to it. Um, so Tao Wong is a Canadian science fiction and fantasy author writing in lit RPG and Zhang Jia. Hopefully I said that right. Um with five different series across a range of worlds. He's been writing full-time since 2019 and has his books in audio, paper book, hardcover and ebook formats, as well as translations to German, Spanish, Portuguese and several others. When he's not writing and working, he's practicing martial arts, reading even more and taking care of his family. Other hobbies include occasional RPGs and board games, as well as picking up new random skill sets. I'm curious what random skill sets you pick up. Yeah. <laughs> um... Oh God, in the last couple of years, um, I was picking, I was doing a uh, horseback riding. So oh, I was picking some oh, classes cool. on that. Um, and then most recently, I was also uh, learning the Naginata, uh, Which is... more martial arts. Oh, uh, oh martial more martial arts. arts yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. You say, um, um, I, I read somewhere that you do, you've done multiple different martial arts. I, I do karate myself. And so I'm always interested in um, someone I've, who does. Yeah, I've done. I've been on and off practicing martial arts for about 30 years now. So uh, uh, I started out with Tai Chi um, and uh, basic self-defense, uh, Chinese martial arts. And then I did some karate uh, for a few years, actually. Then I did um, Western martial arts. Um, so I spent some time learning the rapier, side sword, long sword, a little bit oh, of spear, wow. a bunch oh. of uh, MMA work, uh, boxing, Rav, um, it goes on. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Yeah, so that's really cool. All the things. Let me be clear. I, I'm not good because I I spend like six months or a year or something or even three months uh, and then I stop. Um, okay. Normally because of injuries or I move somewhere <laughs> or something else. Okay. So I, I got a little bit of knowledge on a whole yeah. bunch of things. Which I imagine yeah, is quite cool. helpful. Yeah, writing, right? so. yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. Um, I, I do like learning all of this for writing, and mm. especially because I write fantasy. Exactly. Um, yeah. Really that's awesome. Yeah, that's mm. cool. Well, well, let's start off with um, the, the usual question of how did you get into self-publishing um, or writing and then self-publishing? Give us your origin story. Oh, God. Um, I'm a very strange uh entry into the market um i've been telling myself stories since i was you know tiny um and i've always been doing that and like i probably most writers at one point or another um i wrote a story or two uh you know i wrote a bunch of shorts and wrote a i think like i have two or three uh novel trunked novels that no one will ever see uh because they're that bad um <laughs> we've all got those yeah yeah <laughs> Um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't write for a very long time. Uh, I didn't write fiction for a very long time. And I ended up um, reading and watching a lot of anime at one point. Um, and specifically um, lit RPG type uh, work uh, from Japan, uh, Japanese light novels, uh, Konosuba, Grimga, uh, Danmachi. And so... For those who don't know what lit RPG is, it's basically where uh, the world system, the magic system in the world is based off a video game magic rules. And it is very much up front and center. So everyone has character sheets or stats and you level up and you can actually manipulate it. Um, and, you know, you can plan for what you're doing because you know what your next level up is or and so you can adjust your things. So it's a very much a hard magic system uh, using Brandon Sanderson's hard soft magic system uh, variation. Um, 
it's very different from the older RPG novels that you used to see, like Dragonlance, where you never saw the system. Um, Lit RPG, the system is up front and center. It's part of the books. Um, yeah. And even the people involved know that they are in a Lit RPG uh, yeah. video game or there's a magic system that they can manipulate. Thanks um, for anyway. explaining that. That's great yeah. because I'm sure a lot of, I mean, I don't really know much about it myself, but I'm sure a lot of our listeners yeah. would like, yeah, would like it's to all clear have now. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I've, been, I've spent years wondering. <laughs> and, you, and you just explained it all in like two minutes. <laughs> so well. <laughs> Lit RPG authors get very used to explaining it because yeah, it's, yes. people don't know what it is until they read it. Yeah. Uh, read a story on it and then it's like oh okay i know what this is oh i mm. I, I get the feel for it because yeah. a lot of us have grown up playing video games of some mm. form so you know it makes sense to the uh, people on an intuitive level um yeah. but going back to my origin story if you will um i was just reading a bunch of those light novels uh from japan and then i was I don't recall how i was looking for more work like that and i came across a website uh called Royal Road that was uh, that featured a bunch of these uh, novels, but they were written by amateur novelists uh, for the most part, um, just for fun. You wrote, you threw it up, and mm -hmm. that was it. And so I read a whole bunch. Um, I read Viridian Gate Online, Ascend Online, uh, The Game. Uh, all of these novels were there uh, by actual authors that you actually uh, did the same thing as I did, and eventually publish their work on Amazon. Okay. Um, and then that's what I ended up doing is just for fun, I started writing my own in there. Um, eventually I turned around and went, I have a novel here. Um, <laughs> and cool. I yeah. didn't have time to, uh, or desire to go down the trad pub route. So I put it together, got myself a nice cover, threw it up on Amazon, not expecting to make it a career. Um, just, you know, something mm -hmm. I wrote it, I wanted to have it out there. Yeah. And, and that it, was in 2017 uh, or? Is that 2017, really yep. yeah. And yeah. I just, I was super lucky. Um, I will always say that. Um, I hit the, when the RPG was really p taking off. And so I got very lucky um, with all my novels as they started coming out. And I started making money at it. And so I kept doing it because... Yeah. Mm. Who doesn't like money? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I was going to yeah, say no to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how many books do you have now? Is it something you know? Sorry. Just a, just a I, guess, I, I, a guesstimate. <laughs> um, 35 or so written by myself. Um, 45 maybe. Um, maybe 50 if uh, co-authored. I kind of lose track after a bit because I yeah. just, you, you, you stop counting. Yeah, yeah, yeah you fair do. enough. Well, that's cool. Um, and so then, okay, the other thing we were going to talk about. So you've explained what lit RPG is. Um, can you explain and pronounce and pronounce it properly so I don't have to pronounce it again? Um, the other genre that you mainly write in the um. Um. Yes, I write the ciencia, uh, novels. Um, it is the easiest way to explain it is I call it Chinese high fantasy. Um, if you've watched things like Untamed uh, or you see uh, people, it's very similar to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Uh, as an okay. example. But uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is wuxia, uh, which is martial heroes. It is more low fantasy uh, in the mm -hmm. sense that no one's, you know, swinging their sword and taking down an mountain um yeah. since that's a little bit higher powered it generally uh will trend towards high powered uh gods um okay. the ci is actually uh, immortal yeah. uh and so it involves immortal heroes uh okay. and immortals uh and the gods involved and yeah. so that's what i basically chinese high fantasy set in a secondary world ancient china that never really was mm -hmm. similar to westerns yeah right. and i yeah. and i read somewhere that it's like basically this huge pop culture phenomenon in china is that like it's well, quite big oh it's huge um yeah. i mean wuxia has been huge since ooh, what well okay we could have a whole discussion about this but it's <laughs> wuxia has been very, for a very long time uh yeah. since about uh 
Jin Yong was one of the major uh, writers in the 1940s, I believe, okay. uh, when so he got it. Um, and he wrote the, um, the Legend of the Condor Heroes and uh, a whole bunch of other work like that, Proud Wandering Hero, uh, and so forth. Um, and so he and a whole bunch of his contemporaries uh, were writing in Hong Kong. Uh, but uh, Zensia is part of that uh, subculture of stories as well. And mm -hmm. in the last, I would say, 20, 30 years has really taken off in China. Um, there's a number of reasons for it, um, including censorship and how they view certain types of genres and what they are allowed to write and what's mm -hmm. allowed. But it also harkens back to a time where um, it's it's very much like I guess Western, uh, store Westerns, um, and so um, oh, okay. it's about a time that you know everyone wishes that they lived in, and it's kind of yeah, yeah. cool yeah. heroes, yeah. and the clothing is the hanfu, and everything is just gorgeous. Yeah, it yeah. looks so. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Awesome. Well, that's good. Thank you very much for explaining that. I I was I um yeah was curious about how that that genre worked and 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 what was involved. So um with so so let's talk about Patreon. So when did you? So we know your origin story when you first started publishing. When did you start getting into Patreon and and why did you get into Patreon? Like explain us through that one. Um, I think I started Patreon around twenty nineteen. Um, so. But a couple of years after I started um, writing, and I think very close to or near the same time as I went full time uh, as an author, there's a number of reasons why I've had a Patreon account, partly because I don't like relying entirely on Amazon for all of my income. Um, <sighs> Amazon is run by people who make mistakes. And if you, you know, your only source of income, when someone makes a mistake, your entire business can disappear for months, mm -hmm. you know, maybe mm -hmm. longer. Um, and it can be an honest mistake and it still happens, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and you've got algorithms, which are even worse than people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm into that. <laughs> so, I didn't want to be entirely reliant and I've never wanted to be entirely reliant on Amazon. Uh, so Patreon was a way for me to get uh, my fans to come in, uh, provide a secondary source of income uh, for me. Um, other people were already uh, doing the methodology that, you know, I was, that I stepped into, which was uh, writing first drafts posting it on the Patreon first mm. for the patrons. And then eventually when you're done with everything, you give them the final finished book as well mm. ahead of everyone else. So it time, so it kind of gives people who want your book and gives your super fans a way to access you and to help you out um, well before anyone else. And, yeah. you know, they get free access to uh, work. Um, it works very well for me because I am a clean, I write relatively clean first drafts. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's easier. It's, I think it would be much harder if I wrote really dirty work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they, um, do they give you feedback as you're writing it? Like, are you doing it chapter by chapter, one a, one a week or how, how often? And do they give feedback? Um, I post twice a week. Uh, for the Patreons, uh, for the chapters, um, for the work, and those are the majority of my uh, backers. Um, they can provide feedback, but I am very clear when I tell them, you know, uh, when they join, and it's actually on my uh, Patreon, I believe, that they don't have to worry about, you know, missing sentences or issues like that, because this is a yeah. post drop. I haven't read over it yet at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, so if you see that, you know, you can tell me about it. I never have a problem with that. Um, yeah. But it's quite likely I will catch it or my editor will catch it or my proofer will catch it um, yeah. somewhere along the line. Yeah. Um, or I might change that sentence entirely. Yeah. So um, the things that I do want and I encourage people to give me feedback on is when I make mistakes on names, uh, settings, flow. Uh, sometimes I, I think... 
a recent work, I basically changed the weapons uh, that someone, <laughs> one of the uh, antagonists was using. Um, I gave him maces uh, first, and then I transformed them into swords. And I was like, oh, I didn't even realize I did that. Yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, things like that or plot holes uh, that they catch or, you know, sometimes they might comment that, hey, what happened to this event? And I'll be like, oh, right. Yeah, I probably should. <laughs> hold I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get to that. Yeah. No, that's that's coming in later chapters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can always find a way, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, no, that was deliberate. <laughs> Truthfully, with when it comes to the patrons, I actually just tell them, yeah. Yeah, my, thank you. My bad. Got that. <laughs> my bad. Yeah. Uh, we'll go fix it. Um, because, you know, that it makes them feel like they're helping. And they are, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. I might catch it. I might not. I don't know. Yeah. But the fact that they've highlighted it for me, uh, then that is hugely useful. Because I can just throw a note on my draft. Yeah. I think I think you must be writing, as well as clean, you must be writing very linear. Or, or are you actually putting... Yeah. Are you plotting these stories? I or? don't. Um, um, what wow. I call a plan. Mm. I mm. have a beginning. I have an mm. end. Um, mm. I have rough. My brain generally gives me like the next two to three chapters. And mm -hmm. I know roughly the kind of beats I kind of want. Um, mostly. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, and then the rest, I just write. Um wow. And that is so impressive. I can't even imagine but, that. <laughs> to, you know, to be able to be that um, courageous to put your work out there so mm. soon without knowing that it's edited or just anyone trusting had yourself eyes on it. that your yeah. process that it, it will flow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes it doesn't. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I have. Um, there are some books where I have literally told the. Uh, patrons at the end of it um hey i know there's issues with this um because they always get the final book yes um, i often will tell them uh i know there are some things here that are a little off you know make sure to read the final book um yeah. often in those cases i've added 10 to twenty thousand words uh mm -hmm. just finding you know sections where i'm like i didn't this character has not been flushed out enough. Um, there's not enough, you know, mm -hmm. foreshadowing here. And it's things like that. But, you know, you're, you're quite upfront. At least I'm quite upfront uh, mm -hmm. with my patrons when I find that. And I'm like, yeah, okay, this is a problem. I will fix this. And I'll tell yeah, them, yeah. you know, there's like 20,000 more words inside the final book. Read that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think That's real cool. fans love that behind the scenes. They love I being part so. of the process. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. they do. Um, I, a lot of them, I think, they like seeing as well the uh, changing uh, book. I've had some patrons uh, who just, and there's a large chunk of the patrons who just are there for you, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've had some people tell me I don't read at all. Mm -hmm. I turn off oh, the wow. notification. I don't read. Um, I want to read the final book. Okay. I, I wow. like the final book. Oh, but they're right. supporting you by being yeah. there. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And I've, and I've, got cool. readers, nice. I've got readers like that. Like I've a couple of people I've offered to, you know, can you read an early draft or whatever? And they're like, no, no, I don't want to. So it's interesting that you they're still supporting yeah. you and they're still there for you. They get it early though, don't you? Don't they? You said that? They get it. Yeah, yeah. they do. Yeah. They get a minimum uh, a month early um, from everyone else. So yeah. they get yeah. the... Uh, to read and you know that's the final draft and everything that's cool. so that's going to be really polished by the time you actually yeah. do publish it Absolutely. on other platforms i hope yeah. <laughs> well, it must are... be working <laughs> exactly how long are these books um Tal? um oh god um it depends on the series uh yeah. but the main series that i'm writing right now which is the sensia uh series a thousand league the books are but they started out between 90 to 100K, but lately they've been hitting between 120 to 150. Oh, um, my gosh. <laughs> wow. And how yeah, long does it, it take you to get through an entire book on yeah. um, on how, the how long does it take you to write one? Uh, three to four months. Oh, is oh thank gosh. How, I thought you were going to uh, say a month there. I was going to get angry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, no. I read about... 2,000 words a day uh, yeah. on average. Um, yeah. I work every day. 
uh, pretty much. Um, it just easier for me to keep working every day yep. rather than yes. take uh, long breaks. In you between. stay in the story and the flow comes and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but I also work on multiple projects at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. And so talking about Patreon, uh, one thing I found out is I used to have two major series, uh, the System Apocalypse, which was a little RPG series and a thousand league. And so I would switch between the two. I'd write, you know, for three months in one series, then I'd write in three months in another. And my Patreon uh, backing always did this. Yeah, uh, goes up because, and down. Um, okay. Yeah, well, people wanted either one series or the other. They didn't want yeah. uh, both. Yeah, and right. because they were both so involved series, I couldn't write them both at the same time. Yeah. I couldn't release them at the same time. It just mm -hmm. didn't work with my brain. Mm -hmm. um, it's still the same. I can write something light and something heavy. I cannot write two heavy series. It just mm -hmm. takes too much brain power for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I finished a thousand the uh, sorry no a system apocalypse two years ago, plus ago um, I switched over to writing just a thousand Lee. and that's mm -hmm. the only book that uh, I releg regularly release on the Patreon mm -hmm. um, and that has actually increased my Patreon uh, mm -hmm. support uh, mm -hmm. significantly. Yeah. Uh, compared to when I was just bouncing up and down, up and yeah. down. Right. That makes some sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. does. It does. Yeah. Readers yeah. like consistency, yeah. don't they? Yeah. You know, they really and they want do. and they're so, invested in that series yeah. and those and those characters. And yeah. they, they don't want to switch to be invested into another series and then mm. switch back again. You can sort of understand I'm, that. Yeah. I'm almost like that when I'm reading a, a fantasy does this quite often, a book with yeah. too many points of view. And, you, yeah. and you, you're reading one chapter and you love this particular character and then they switch to a character you don't like. And you're and like, you kinda, oh, no. You kind of like <laughs> grudgingly read through that character until you can get back to the yeah. character you want to in it. Yeah. 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 Um, it had, yeah. That's the biggest problem of epic fantasy for sure, where you either you do have characters that you're like, I have no desire to read yeah. them. That was <laughs> pairing with World of uh, the Wheel of Time all the time. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to read another Perrin and Fail chapter. Yes, no. yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So with your patrons, so you you'd use the one um one car uh, one series, sorry. Um do you have multiple levels? Like like um you can yeah, explain yeah. what you do with those. Um I do. I have a one dollar support level where they don't get any uh chapters at all, but they do get my updates and whatnot. Uh if I have something to update them with. Um I find that one dollar support level, people use it as kind of just a reminder so they drop down to the one dollar support level uh up until i'm um, like two months into a book and then they'll just increase it go back up to five dollars uh, which okay. is my next level up uh for writing uh, where people start getting chapters because i time gate the chapters too so five dollars gets uh one chapter uh, a number of chapters and then um so let's say they get one chapter here um, ten dollars will get uh, two chapters, and then uh, twenty dollars is about four chapters ahead. Um, and then I have uh, a thirty dollar and a fifty dollar level. Um, and those thirty, the thirty dollar level basically is you still get four chapters, but um, when the audio box comes out, we'll send you the audio. Uh, okay. I think the thirty dollars. Sorry, the thirty dollars is actually for the paperbacks. Um, yeah. They get the yeah. paperbacks. That yeah. 20, twenty five, I think, is where you get the audio book. Yeah. And then fifty dollars. It's it's my. I love you. I don't know. You you're getting hard <laughs> covers um, versions of the work, but I don't know why you're supporting me. Thank you so much for doing that. I um, love you. <laughs> pretty much. Um, yeah. I have a friend, uh, Dakota, who used to have a five thousand dollar level, uh, <gasps> and he's like, "I will fly over to your house, <laughs> clean clean your house, uh, and cook your meals." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need a five k level. Like yeah. five k level. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, I don't think anyone's ever taken him up on that. Um, yeah. Yeah, to put <laughs> that's sad. Something because, to aspire to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's brilliant. Uh, that's so so, so those, that's a month. Like, So those are numbers that you're talking about is mo monthly. Yeah, those are all and when per you, month. And sure. when you say a chapter, you know, the $5 people get a chapter, is that per week or per month as well? Or are they getting? Um, I release two chapters a week um, yeah. uh, to the Patreon. So, yeah. Um, and so it's just how many chapters ahead of them of yes. the other they get yes. to read. Right. So 
So they get so one some chapter will get a week the book read and, first, first yeah. quicker than others. Mm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. It, okay. you'll everyone gets to read it eventually. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense. So that's cool. And do you like how? What has the growth been like? Like how how was it like when you first started out? And what are you at now? Very. If you don't mind. When I first started out, it was very slow. I mean, the thing I didn't realize about Patreon or Ream or any of the subscription services is that these are all your super fans these are people mm -hmm. who really really want to read whatever yeah. next uh the way that we do it at least mm -hmm. uh they want to read whatever nicks you're putting out so they're not your average person who picks up a book and then forgets about you for two years um mm -hmm. these are the people who love your work and yeah. so it takes a while to build them up um the other aspect is as i said when i used to switch between series i would lose like a good 20 to 50 um subscribers so I think it took me two years or so before I hit a hundred or so uh, subscribers. Um, these days I am at about three, 250. <laughs> but you've I grown quite a bit. Wow. Uh, 250 or 300 uh, subscribers, something like that. Yeah, uh, that's good. That is so good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Wait. no, it's, I'm very happy with it. So where do you advertise, you know, tell people that you've got Patreon? At the back of my books, right. um, all of them, there's a note saying, hey, come by. Uh, we mention it in our newsletters um, yep. as well. And social media, occasionally yep. I'll make a post uh, asking people. But also whenever we post a post on uh, Patreon, it gets pushed out to all the social media uh, sections as well. We don't get a huge number from them. It mostly comes from people finishing a book and going, hey, I want to. And so we always see a surge right after mm -hmm. uh, a book is released, uh, like a few yeah, days after. Yeah. People are like, oh, you've got uh, more. And I've actually seen an increase in the number of readers uh, because now I'm writing and publishing about six months to a year uh, later after I finished the book um, mm -hmm. just for my own sanity's sake and to yeah. line up um, editors and mm. narrators and yeah. and yeah all of the back end um, I just ha I pushed out my publishing uh, schedule a lot now I've got book literally I released book 10 last month and I am writing and releasing book 12 now uh, mm. on the page mm -hmm. so yeah. I see definitely seen an increase in people coming by uh, because yeah. like oh hey I can read the next book and a bit of the book yeah. after that yeah mm -hmm. and I don't have to wait yeah for yeah. release yeah. date which makes yeah. sense right especially if you're if you're hooked into a series and mm -hmm. you have to wait for the next book to come out you're like oh, I don't you know and you sort of lose interest or or whatever and you go looking for it mm -hmm. and it's not there and it's not going to be out for a year you're like oh mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. a lot of a lot of yeah, because a lot of people actually won't buy my books until the whole series is out, and then they'll buy the whole series mm. and read it. You know, mm. so it makes and sense. I, I'm I'm glad not everyone does that for me because I write twelve book series. So mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a long time to wait. <laughs> it's a very long time. To wait. So, what are you releasing? About two books a year, or how is that? Um, for a thousand Lee, I release about two books a year. Uh, yep. right now i also have other releases that go out um in between that um i have another series called climbing the ranks which isn't patreon but it's a serial um that i will that i write on my own uh started publishing website which is released entirely for free there and again i do the same thing where chapters you can subscribe on started publishing itself and mm -hmm. then uh get five or ten or I think it's like 20 chapters ahead of whatever is being released for free. Um, okay. So that's another subscription model. It doesn't use Patreon. It uses the software inside Shopify to do the same thing. Um, mm, okay. And I did that mostly to drive traffic to start publishing so that I can get people to keep coming back to it and potentially buy uh, my books for me. So yeah. it's kind of different thing from Patreon itself, but it does use the same subscription model. Um, Is it very different? How do you find working it from your own website versus Patreon? Um, the software is not as smooth. Um, I think um, doing it through 
um, Shopify, we have had to cudgel a bunch of things together. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So it's not as smooth. It's not really meant for this, um, yeah. but it does have the nice advantage of taking the money directly from them. And I don't have to pay uh, Patreon their cut either. So I only have to pay my 2% or uh, processing fee. Mm -hmm. And it's about, mm -hmm. works out to be over 3%. Mm -hmm. um, so I take a slightly larger percentage. Um, whereas if you go through Ream or Patreon these days, I think it's like 10% plus the processing fee. So it's like 13 to 15% that goes away. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, advantage. Um, of doing it directly. Um, it don't make a lot of money from that uh, series. Um, it, the goal has never been to make a lot of money. It's more to drive people into the shop mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. So it's a long-term play that uh, yeah. okay. it's working out yeah. the way That's I expect it to. So, so if we talk about serials and like the writing of the serials, are you thinking about like as you're doing your chapters each um, each week, or whenever you're writing them, are you thinking about cliffhangers? Are you thinking about ways to keep them coming back and and those kinds of things, or compelling mm. the characters that they love and making sure that those characters are included, that kind of thing? Um, yes and no. <laughs> Again, um, I write two different ways, right? Um, for a thousand Lee, I am very much not thinking about that. I'm thinking, I write it like I would write any novel. Um, I am following the mental beat uh, and format I have for a novel. So there's time skips, there's, you know, uh, shifts of POVs or whatever that is necessary to make it a compact novel. Um, I actually had a recent complaint about that because when you're writing um, a novel, especially towards the end where there's big fright scenes and there's big cliffhangers after every you know portion of the big fight scene um i had a reader come and complain to me about oh god this is horrendous <laughs> you know i'm having to wait for you know uh each of mm. these uh, cliffhangers yeah. to be finished and it's, yeah. it's fine when i'm in a novel i can just read um yeah but now i'm waiting like you know three uh three weeks for you to finish this big fight scene yeah. and i'm like yeah I mean, yeah. that's just the way it is. Um, Sorry about it. No <laughs> Sorry about it. Can't do much. Yeah. Um, you know? It's a good problem to have though, right? <laughs> it is. It really is. Um, whereas with writing for the serial, uh, Climbing the Ranks, I am very much thinking about uh, cliffhangers, about uh, how to wrap up every chapter to kind of draw people in. Um, I am thinking about shorter arcs. Serial writing is weird. Um in the sense that it's almost, there's a lot more, I would call it, it's almost like dross, really. Things that I would normally cut out of a normal novel, mm -hmm. I don't cut it out in, in a serial because it keeps the pace of it flowing. Mm -hmm. And if you're reading it chapter to chapter, it works really well. Mm -hmm. If you're And if you're reading it uh, on a release schedule, all of these tiny hooks that keep, keep keep you coming back, you want it there. You want to be coming back and reading that. Um, mm. I wouldn't do the same thing in a novel. So yeah, it's a, interesting. Yeah. And it balloons. It balloons my uh, word count hugely. Like my book one of Climbing the Ranks worked out to be 180,000 words. Book two is 220,000 words. Oh my it's gosh. Huge. Wow. Are you releasing those ones as as novels on other platforms, or are they? Um, I released the book one of Climbing the Ranks uh, in December, and book two will be released in the uh, later part of this year okay. as well. Yeah. Um, I just have to get caught up with my release schedule on my site. Yeah. So do you then think? Does that change how, like, you, you know, you say these things in those ones that you would um, normally have pulled out of a novel that you leave in. Do you th Does that change it when it when people read it as a novel? Are they? It does. You um, Lit RPG has a lot of serial writers and a serial uh, works that have been transferred into um, Amazon. And they've done really well on Amazon, don't get me wrong. But you do also see uh, people who are more used to novel writing novels uh mm. who come by and read it and go and complain about mm. it um, okay. because there is so much dross in there there is so much uh stuff that you know they're just not used to 
uh, you know, oh, well, he's going to walk there and he's going to pick things up and he's going to, yeah, you know, yeah. Mm. Just yeah. that you not wouldn't bother with, but it's all in there. Um, yeah. And you do get people who aren't used to that looking at it and going, what the heck? Yeah. And then, yeah. Mm. But there's it's a large percentage. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that love. people expect it. Like, the, so the lit RPG readers know that, that it's come from being a serial and that they kind of just understand that that's, that's why this is, stuff is in there, would you say? I think that's a large number who do. Um, lit RPG in particular has also drawn in a lot of people who don't normally read. Uh, and so they've actually, uh, and this, they've come back to reading because of these books. Oh. Uh, and so I don't think their expectations are the same. Um, okay. Also, we have a huge percentage of uh, audiobook listeners. Like it's anywhere from 40 to 60% of uh, wow. a lot of authors' um, income. And so, our, or even unit sales. So, and a lot of these uh, audiobook readers, they're listening it half, they're half listening to it while they're driving or doing something else. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. all of this extra stuff actually is useful because it keeps them in the story without having them to be 100% focused. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. It's kind of, I don't know if it's linked or, but like my daughter used to love, for example, Minecraft, and she would watch YouTube videos of other people playing Minecraft. And I know yeah. that they do that for other games as well. It's not just mm -hmm. Minecraft. It's just that's my experience of it. And so I wonder whether there's that kind of almost the subculture of of that kind of the people who love gaming and are in that world are coming in and kind of and you know like yeah creates this I, I definitely think there's a, a percentage of those people coming in and just enjoying you know living through these stories and you know yeah. especially yeah. when they don't have time to play games anymore Mm. yeah yeah oh that's fascinating it's a, it's a whole new world yeah. mm. I'm, I'm Gosh. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um, so I know that you just that we talked about this that the, the, the Patreon and the, the um the serials as, or the that part of it is just one part of your whole process for for when you're putting books out there and it I think it starts with Kickstarter am I right like is that can you just um, go through well, and explain to us how you how you launch and publish each of your books? It's not all for all books. Uh, it depends on which books we are doing. Um, yeah. But for my personal books, a lot of them. Uh, we do have Kickstarter as an addition. So um, Climbing the Ranks is an example where we have Kickstarter included. So we write it on the site. We get money from people, uh, subscribers, as we are writing, releasing it. Uh, once it's ready, we put it on, uh, we did a Kickstarter for it, uh, generated additional funds uh, to send out physical copies of the book to everyone and sign copies and everything like that. Mm -hmm. After that, um, once it's that gone through Kickstarter, we then uh, publish it on Amazon uh, for another bite on it. And then, of course, from Amazon, we drive people back into Starlet Publishing where they can read more chapters for the yeah. next book for free. And hopefully some of them will come in and subscribe uh, from us and we keep on doing that. So climbing the ranks, we have a, a Kickstarter schedule for later this year as well for book two as well. Mm. Um, we don't always do Kickstarters for every series as we come out. Um, we were thinking about doing that last year and we tried that, but the problem starts becoming how much effort and time running a Kickstarter is. Um, so mm. we've pulled back a little bit on it. And so, for example, uh, Fool's Play, um, which is in the Kickstart, which is a co-authored book that we did a Kickstarter for book one on, um, we won't we decided not to do a Kickstarter for book two, uh, just because of the sheer amount of work and additional yeah. time it took. Um, for not a huge amount of return, uh, mm. realistically speaking, we made we raised mm. about three thousand um, dollars for okay. Fool's Play, which is great. I mean, it covered the cost of you know the ads and uh, sorry, the cover and editing and stuff like that. So that once we went out, it was, you know, it's already positive income. Mm. So we didn't do uh, book two. We won't do it for book three. The plan is to go and do another Kickstarter at the end, uh, once all three books are done. And then we have an omnibus that we can do a whole uh, Kickstarter on. Yeah. yeah. So it's, and right now we're running a Kickstarter for the um, A Thousand Liter First Step. And that's a deluxe edition Kickstarter. 
which is really where the big money is. Um, if you look at any of the large uh, successful Kickstarters that have been done by indie authors, it's generally either a whole new book that you can, is that is exclusive, um, or it's the deluxe edition. And a lot of that has to do with the um, price point. Like the Nameless Restaurant last year, we did a Kickstarter for it. And we had like 210 uh, subscri uh, backers. Okay. Uh, we raised, I think it was about $10,000. I'm Don't quote me on that. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's around $10,000. We've hit about the same number or slightly more than that, and we've more than doubled that amount uh, with the current Kickstarter because our ask is so much higher. Uh, um, the deluxe yeah. edition is more expensive because it costs us a lot more. You know, we spend yeah. a large chunk of cash uh, getting new art and everything mm. like that for it. Mm. And so you're just because the higher dollar value is there, you will yeah. see high numbers for the Lux editions in Kickstarters. But it's a great way of, you know, just covering costs beforehand. Mm. Do you think it actually also creates buzz and gets kind of the book, you know, is it a is it a promotion a hype, advertising yeah. thing, a hype thing? Or not really? I, I think it can for some people. Um, I think it can definitely help uh start putting your name out there and your work out there. I haven't, in my experience, found that it's helped a lot in terms of that buzz or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, as I said, I would think our most successful Kickstarter before the current one, uh, we only had like 200 something backers. So that's only like 200 people who have had the book or get a chance to read it or anything. So it's not a huge, huge number. It's not insignificant. Uh, mm -hmm. but it's not like you know tens of thousands of people mm -hmm. it's you're not hitting sanderson level buzz <laughs> yeah, yeah no one hits sanderson level no, buzz. No one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so so that's a kickstarter's in there after you've done the patreon and then you you do um audio do you do you don't do the audio yourself though you, do you do it through other places or no um oh god it's a complicated question um Basically, yes and no. Um, we have mostly do mostly done most of our audio in-house. Um, and we did that for a long time because the initial deals uh, offered to us uh, as a new writer were horrendous. Um, yeah. Early on, they will give you 10%, 15% uh, audio deals. And a lot of people get caught on that. And you don't earn a lot of money on that. And then they'll sign you up for your whole series, which is, mm. yeah. Mm. Um, so I turned away from audio for a very long time, um, being published by other people. Um, I produce it myself. But Dreamscape came to me and made me an offer for some books. And then I contacted and talked to Tantor and Podium and all, that, all of them. And because I've been in the industry for a while, um, because I've done relatively well, um, they started actually making me offers that were worthwhile doing. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so um, where the advance is significant, you know, the percentage returned is uh, decent. And so we've started doing uh, work through pet, actually pretty much every single of the big ones, Dreamscape, Tan, and Podium now we have deals with and we put work out through uh, or we'll put out work with Podium. Um, so a little bit of both. Um, mm -hmm. I think for some work, we will always uh, do internally because the ROI on it is going to be much mm -hmm. better. But some work, it actually makes sense to work with uh, the audiobook producers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I like that, that you held out. You, you knew that it was a bad mm -hmm bad deal and, and held out yeah. for a better one mm -hmm. yeah oh god it was such a bad deal back then <laughs> like 10 percent i can't remember it was 10 or 15 percent uh and it was for the whole series and it was yeah and no advance so mm. 
Yeah, but to, and so if you're saying that audio makes up like a pretty significant portion of your of people, and is it in general in Lit RPG that that forty percent? In general, in Lit RPG, yeah, that's interesting. So lots of people are listening to it on, and is it like you're saying that they're listening to it in the background when they're driving or whatever? Like that's a that's what I hear. Um, listening to how people talk about it on the uh, various forums and everything, a large chunk of them do listen to it. You know, as they're doing something else, whether mm. it's cleaning in the house or chores or going for a walk or mm. driving, um, we mm. get a lot of truck drivers. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Okay, that's cool. Mm. And do you actually publish to other platforms as well? Like, are you publishing on Draft Digital or Kobo and Barnes and Noble and all the places? Yep. Uh, going back to the fact that I don't like um, being entirely reliant on Amazon, uh, we pub we have our own store. We publish to pretty much every retailer. Uh, we even with our audiobooks, we don't we're not exclusive uh, necessarily with uh, Audible uh, ACX. Um, not all, like some of them are exclusive, obviously, and some of them aren't. We take everything from a series by series look at it and decide, is it worthwhile? Has the income dropped from KU enough? Or what's our strategy going in with this specific series? Do we expect to make a lot of money uh, in KU? Because KU really does not benefit short works. And I write some short works uh, quite regularly. I write um, novellas and novelettes. And so if you've got a novella or novelette, it doesn't, unless you're rapid releasing, it does not do you any good to be in KU because you're earning like 60 cents, uh, you know, every week through, which just isn't mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So it's just a case by case, knowing the platforms, knowing the, the stuff mm -hmm. you're doing. Um, and so, and you also do translations after that. So you're, Yep. you're getting another another audience in other countries so that yeah. must be is that you're doing that yourself as well uh yeah pretty much oh, well is so that a yes and no be... are you going to say yes and no again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of yes and no's right <laughs> It is. It's, I, I take every deal as it comes in and I look at it carefully. Um, I will walk away from deals that I don't feel are right for me. Um, I've walked away from uh, translation deals, agents, and uh, a comic deal um, because I didn't think they were right. Um, and a lot of times it's the contract. Um, it, But... Yeah. Uh, it, if the deal looks right and it comes to me, I I will take it uh, mm. if I think it works. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly we do our, like 95% of translations are done in-house right now. Um, yeah. We are pulling back on doing as much translations in other languages because it doesn't make sense financially. For most of our, outside of German, um, there just isn't a big market yet um, for the RPG or Sansia, uh in the other languages. Um, that might change in four to five years or for some of my other work, but right now mm -hmm. it does, doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. How big is your team of people that you have working with you? Um, I have one full-time employee uh, who does mostly the marketing side of things, and I have uh, two part-time uh, virtual assistants uh, and they deal with all the back-end stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Because there's a lot going Easy. on. A lot going on in A lot going world. on. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. I probably have a bigger, I probably spend more money on my back-end because I have so many yes, no answers uh, yes. and so, so many small exceptions. Yeah. I could probably streamline things if I just did ACU, uh, KU and ACX and, you know, mm -hmm. call it called it a day yeah um i don't um because i don't trust amazon i don't trust uh yeah. the chances of you know what they might do um mm -hmm. yeah. i've had past experiences and i've had friends who have run into problems like that and i just i'm not a risk taker yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's nice to have a safety net somewhere else isn't it just in case yeah. it is so yeah. much um 
-hmm. I last year was the first year where I looked at it and went, I have now enough income coming up, excluding Audible, excluding uh, Amazon, basically any of the Amazon associates. I still have enough income coming in from all the other streams that I can say, I can still, you know, you'll be, you'll be right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, real good. That's, that's ideal, in fact. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, what else? What else can we talk about? I'm just trying to think what else I have in mind. So my... many things. My head's spinning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was the other thing. One more question was kind of around the marketing that you do. Like, so does does the Patreon getting people into their market itself, or are you? Are you sort of doing Facebook ads or, you know, like what kind of things do we you do? We don't do pay Facebook ads to draw people in. Um, again, it's very much super fans, right? So it doesn't make any sense to run generic uh, Facebook mm -hmm. ads to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We run Facebook ads to our individual books to get them into the series. And then hopefully they will come in to become Patreons eventually. Um but the marketing for the Patreon is very much uh, newsletter, social media based yeah, so I guess uh, and, and at the back of the books, you yeah. know. So you're uh, taking people who are already fans and you're taking them to the next level. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I should point out that um, the free chapter model uh, on a public platform thing is something that is done very well in a Royal Road. Um which is a huge uh, sci-fi fantasy uh, free website. Um, people post their chapters for free there. And then there's a very, very clear link on every chapter uh, to a Patreon section, if you have a Patreon, where they can then join in and uh, get additional people. And there are some very huge uh, authors who have done that and make a very large amount of money. Uh, I think Shirtaloon, uh, who writes uh, He Who Fights With Monsters, is the largest Patreon uh, author, and he makes something like $65,000 a month wow. uh, off his Patreon. I didn't know. Yeah. No, oh. it's... Uh, so that, if because Royal Road is such a big website within the genre, and just for sci-fi and fantasy people, there's a large number of people who go on there, read books for free, and then, you know, jump on to other uh, Patreons uh, from there. Mm -hmm. uh, but like with everything else, it's mm -hmm. a very yeah. pyramid. Yeah. So yeah. a lot do of you, people not having a lot. Do you still have stuff on Royal Road or is it not something? I uh, I stopped being on Royal Road um, about 2019 or so. Um, mm -hmm. For a time, I found that it wasn't helping with my writing process uh, right. because there was, you get a lot more comments on Royal Road than inside the Patreon. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. It, it was a lot and people were complaining and then I'd go back and I'd make changes or something yeah. and it wasn't working out. So it, it was, was making, you, it was making yeah. you start to question your own processes a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. to some extent. It didn't, mm -hmm. uh, the way I was writing back then, it really because i would jump backwards sometimes and fix yeah. old chapters because mm -hmm. i would realize that something i was writing now didn't work mm -hmm. then i'd be going well do i need to fix it on the patreon yeah. because it's not going to make it sense uh sorry on royal road because it's not going to make any sense yeah. anymore for yeah. someone because mm -hmm. this this suddenly just jumps up right. um, and so it became with patreons i can just put a little note in there hey this has happened Mm -hmm. you know i'll fix it, I'll fix um, it later yeah, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. hang yeah. in there buddy yeah. and, and they're your, yeah. they're your people already so they're yeah. going to understand yeah you, they're going to get you because yeah. they're your fans yeah. anyway that's yeah. the difference yeah, exactly. it's yeah. like the, the the they already love you you know the wider yeah. people versus the i think maybe i don't know if you can do this because i don't know the royal road platform but it's almost like something where you'd maybe want to finish the entire book and then, and then start posting it, it yeah. chapter by chapter and doing it like that rather than... You can definitely do that. And I know some people who have done that. Mm. Um, it's interesting. I mean, there's a lot of strategies involved in using mm. Royal Road um, and Patreon as an income model. Um, I cannot say I am an expert in it, obviously, because I don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I just kind of watch people from afar. Um, but I do know that one of the things is that a lot of 
one of the major players uh, contents that you should write like a large number of uh, small chapters in the beginning, toss it out and see if it catches on because like Amazon, Royal Road has its own algorithm. It has its own way of getting people on to your thing. Mm -hmm. It's very much better at giving people chances to see you, but it does mean that uh, if you don't count, catch on, you just drop away. Yeah. And so one of the contentions is that you should just try. If it doesn't catch on within like two, three months, junk it. Try yeah, and I don't think story. I could handle that. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, people, that coming, people coming no, out at fair. you to say. No, no. <laughs> if I've started a book, I don't want anyone reading it before I do. <laughs> it, it is a, a very different soul. book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I couldn't, I'm not sure I could just abandon a series, you no. know. No. 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 finishing. Or even abandoning a well, okay. Yeah. I shouldn't say I shouldn't. <laughs> I won't abandon a book. I have a lot of books that have been abandoned, but people yeah. don't get to see them. Yes, yes. that's right. Exactly. No one's told you to abandon them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. on you. Yeah. 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 We've all done. We've got You're not disappointing those. anybody because they don't. No. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. swear I'll get back to them. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. not going yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. They, they've yeah. heard it all before. <laughs> <laughs> So we're coming up to the end of our interview time, but I just wanted quickly to know, um, do you have any kind of any tips for someone who's thinking about starting Patreon, like best practice where they should, what they should think about when they, when they get going? Um, make sure you have a $1 tier. Um, figure out what your minimum tier that you want to uh, ask people for. Um, but I would almost always suggest um, at least $5, you know, um, as your, I'm actually going to give them something substantial. Mm -hmm. um, anything less than that, and it's not really worth your time or their time. You know, um, yeah. I understand it's going to take for a while. Make sure you have your uh, big tier, right? Um, the 5,000 one? Not yeah, well, <laughs> maybe the 5,000 one. Um, but, you know, $50, $100, yeah. you know, um, yeah. even if it seems ridiculous for you to put it up there, you don't know what, people will uh yeah. you know support you at and what they you know can afford to mm -hmm. uh and since you're not holding anyone's hostage to go and get their money this is no that's right um yeah. and so i would definitely do that i wouldn't necessarily start it unless you have um in our fans if you're not selling right now Mm -hmm. Patreon is not the way to go, um, yeah. because it is very much a super fans kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. It is there's no one's gonna read, uh, especially the way, especially the way I do it now. Admittedly, mm -hmm. um, there might be a, there are other models um, where it's just sold off the brand of the individual. N.K. Jemison's one, for example, um, but even then they're selling themselves, right? Access to themselves. They're selling yeah. the fact that you want to support me and me being able to pay my bills on a regular basis. If you're no one, if you're not able to give them any uh, value uh, from in, then there's no reason for someone to support you. No. If you have not sold any books to them before, there is no reason for them to come and uh, read your work, which is why the free chapters on Royal Road, and then moving to Patreon model works because they know who you are. They've been reading your work mm -hmm. and now they're going to help you out. It's why someone like N.K. Jemison can have a uh, Patreon because they know who she is. You know, mm -hmm. they love her work. They want to support her. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And so a lot of trad pop authors do that where they don't really talk about the work that they're working on because of contracts and everything like that. So they then uh, give access to themselves and are basically are saying, hey, come and support me so I can keep writing, you know, and yeah. I don't have to worry about my ex bills. Yeah. But you won't do that without giving value. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Makes sense. That makes sense. So something yeah. that people are going to want, whether it's access mm -hmm. or chapters or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um I've seen some where other authors uh talk about world building, um, writing and dialogue. Um I didn't mention it, uh, but I also have a two dollar tier inside my Patreon, which is my business posts. Uh, once I write a business post about publishing, uh, and it gets posted on my website every month. 
uh, every week, sorry. And so the $2 tier is basically, you get access to the post like a week early, whatever, you know. Right. Uh, I get a small number of uh, subscribers to that, but um, again, yeah. it's early access value and a way for people to throw money at me if they want to. Yeah. 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 And it's their yeah. choice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's something that you're already doing, presumably. So it's just another yeah. way to yeah. get yeah. yeah. followers. Um, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. Smart. Well, yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us here. Yeah. Star. We've really enjoyed We've talking a lot. to you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Our minds yeah. are gone yeah. bum. <laughs> Literally whole new world. Yeah. 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 No, that's been cool. So if, if people want to uh, check, find out more about you or your writing or join you on Patreon or whatever, where, where are the best places to find you? Go um, to. My personal website is mylifemytow.com. Yeah. Uh, and which my... I love, by the way, that's an awesome yeah, title. Yeah, cool title. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, and my uh, company's website is starletpublishing dot com. Okay. And so, uh, those are the two that you can uh, find my work on. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Well, we'll have both those links in the show notes for anyone listening. Um, mm -hmm. But for now, thank you so much for joining us. We really enjoyed it. And thank you all our listeners. Oh, we can be found. Oh, sorry. Actually, sorry, Sha. Okay. Much. I was going to say that in my goodbyes, we can yeah. be found at spargirlspodcast.com and we too can be found on Patreon at Spargirls Podcast. If you'd like to buy us a coffee or, or more, we would be most appreciative. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. And thank you to all our listeners for another episode or listening to another episode of the Spargirls Podcast. We'll be back again next week. But for now, farewell. Farewell. Bye. 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 Bye.